Today's breakdown is brought to you by NFL Game Pass. All of our film analysis would not be possible without access to NFL Game Pass. So get to gamepass.nfl.com to sign up for the upcoming NFL season. Welcome back to another edition of Cover One, the film room. I'm your host, Eric Turner. Today, I'm joined by former Buffalo Bills linebacker, Lorenzo Alexander. What's going on, brother? Good to see you again. Yeah, good seeing you too, E, man. Everything is going well. Um, You know, obviously just dealing with the pandemic, sheltering in place here in Paradise Valley out in Arizona and uh, homeschooling every single day. So things have been good, getting all the family time that I needed, that I wanted, and I uh, decided to walk away from the game. And so it has definitely been a a different offseason, but much needed in a lot of different ways as far as just spending time and being more intimate with my family. Now, now that you're retired, obviously you're spending more time with your family. Um, how is your body feeling? Has your body totally recovered from your entire career? I mean, are you? How's that body feeling? <laughs> I don't know if I'm ever going to uh, fully recover <laughs> from my entire career. I mean, even in some cases, you, you may even think that I'm could be disabled. I mean, I have like in my right shoulder, I have n- nerve damage that will be there for the rest of my life. Like it works at 20% less than than my left side. So. Those are just some ailments that I always have to deal with, some aches and pains, but I do feel good right now. Obviously, I haven't had to run into anybody, and I think also since I've mentally let go of playing football um, as far as my day job, I don't even like contact. I have a hard time even wrestling with my sons because they're really aggressive. So I've kind of exhaled in a lot of ways, but at the same time, I'm still working out. I'm still training because that's that's become a part of who I am and what I do um, in my daily life and routine. And so not only does it give me uh, the ability to feel good and feel strong, but it's like a mental release as well to kind of get away from things and just kind of go into my own world um, like I used to do when I was training for ball. It's good to hear that retirement's going well, that you're you know able to spend a lot more time with the family. Um, I want to talk about uh, your, your playing career uh, with the Bills and your the roles that you play, because you had several different roles on that team on and off the field. Obviously a leader off the field and, and, and role model for a lot of those uh, young guys. Um, but, you know, specifically the special teams angle, because obviously the Bills are going to have to replace a lot of your reps on special teams. That's something that you took a lot of pride in yeah. and something that they're going to have to obviously replace. So uh, let's talk specifically, like what positions did you play on the, the punt team and maybe a replacement that could step in there, if, you know, at that left guard position on a punt, uh, a, a yeah. punt coverage team? Like what type of uh, right. replacements do they have in place for you? So like you said, I mean, obviously I played the left guard position. I could really play guard, tackle on either side. And normally uh, most special teams coaches love bigger bodies in there. So I can see a guy like uh, Adaro Johnson in his second year where he got a lot of reps last year, filling in that role. Uh, maybe A.J. Klein, who obviously they just brought in as well as a linebacker body. And I don't know if Mario, I know Mario plays for special teams. I don't know how much he's done that of late, but he also could be a guy that maybe they want to rotate in there as well because he's a veteran and somebody that they can trust. Because you normally want to have guys that are in that A gap, really protecting that B gap as well that you really trust because that's where a lot of the pressure comes from that's going to end up being blocks. And so um, I can see one of those three guys moving in there, um, you know, and trying to fill, fill the void for me on, on, on the punt team for special teams. What about uh you know the kickoff team? I saw you covering some kicks there. You were uh was yeah, at number two. You're two inside, so what like R two or something like that most of the time or yeah, I, you know I moved around a little bit. Um, they really wanted me at the two, you know, and he he trusted me to just to kind of keep contain. Um, that's really what a two job is to really yep. box the ball and turn it back into everybody else. You also can make some plays out there because we we did a lot of directional kicking as well and. I was able to find a couple of plays out there as well. Um, and in that position, you traditionally want somebody that can that, that has a little bit, probably a little bit more speed than me, because I traditionally I play like the three and the four. That's more of a, you know, a, a linebacker, uh, I think a, a bigger speed, skill type guy. Right. Um, but at the two, you can, if you can find a nice safety that can run down there, good speed. I know uh, Micah did it a little bit. Obviously, you don't want you starting safety out there. Yeah. Um, but just thinking about maybe uh, Quan. Quan could do it. I think he's in his second year stepping up. Dean Marlowe could do it. So I, I, I like those type of guys that can run, but then they're also physical. Um, and guys that you can trust. Both those guys, I think, really have stepped up their game. You know, Quan having his rookie year last year and Dean, I think, going into his fourth or fifth year are both guys that um, are backup safeties and rotational players on defense. But are going to serve a big part as far as what they do on special teams uh, if, they, if they can find a spot on the roster. And I can see both of those guys potentially 
uh, playing out there and probably a couple of other guys that will probably come out of uh, out of the draft class as well. Yeah, totally. And, uh, you know, on defense, as, as far as the base packages go, um, obviously they used you a lot inside as like a three-tack, four-eye on pass rushing situations, use you on the edge. Right. Um, Pro Football Focus has you down for 278 snaps along the D-line. They have about 221 snaps for you as a box player, sometimes off the ball and whatnot. Um, so why don't you quickly run down uh, maybe guys that can do some of what you did. You play like a little of that joker role, which I would imagine Mario Addison brings some of that yep. to the, the table, right? Yeah, I definitely think so. I mean, he did some of that in Carolina, and then actually we played together in Washington. And so he's been around it for a long time when me and him used to work together there, um, just trying to figure out the joker position because we had some similar schemes and sets up and setups. And so he's obviously done a great job in Carolina being a double digit sag guy. He was very smart and intelligent. And I can actually see him and Trent kind of taking that role over as far as yep. a guy that can stand up and move around because Trent obviously did the same thing when he was in Washington out of that 3 4 system. Um, and really be able to take advantage of protections because they're both intelligent, both very smart, and be able to control what the D-line does. Um, off the ball, um, I think right now it's going to probably primarily be A.J. Uh, Klein and, and him playing the wheel backer and over and over fronts. Right. Um, but I know they have some other guys there that's going to be competing in, in that um, linebacker room for that spot. So it's going to be interesting to see how things pan out, how people's roles progress. Um, and I don't know if they're going to be able to find one person that did what I did. Not to say that, you know, I'm that great, but I was just able to play like backup um, Matt Milano, for example, even on when yeah. he went down for a couple of games last season, the season before, be able to go in there and play Will, too. Yeah. And so we had some packages um, sometimes where I was actually the Will backer. And uh, so they may lose a little bit as far as what they can do there because maybe they don't have a guy that is – has done it enough, not that they're not able to do it, but they just haven't done it or been exposed to it. So the coaching staff may not be aware. And so they may lose a couple of looks like that. But based on the guys that they brought in, I think they'll do a great job as far as still doing everything they want to do on first, second down, and then be able to throw some wrinkles at you on third down. Yeah, and some of those wrinkles we're going to go over. We're going to take a look at some of your pass rushes from last year and some of the sacks that you were involved in. And like you said, how the defensive staff decided to attack the pass protection. So without further ado, let's jump into the film room. Yeah. All right, Lorenzo, first play is third and 10. It's against the Jets. And what we're going to see here is uh, one of your you know sub packages. You're in there uh, right on the defensive line. You guys are in man coverage across the board. And I want you to break this down from the end zone angle because it's a really good play by you guys. Again, versus man coverage, you guys get a nice pressure uh, up the middle. You guys push the pocket. I mean, if you guys look where the ball spotted right at the 50, watch where the play ends uh, on Sam Darnold. I mean, it's right inside the 45-yard line. And, I mean, that type of pressure up the middle and pushing the pocket is exactly what defensive coordinators want to see for the quarterback. What's great about... Uh, the Bills scheme and guys like yourself and guys that the Bills have now is that any one of these defenders along the line of scrimmage have the capability to rush, right? Yeah, everybody does. And I think even Tremaine, um, even though that's not something he naturally does, has developed a a, a, um, a game as well. And then obviously Matt Milano, we blitz him a lot as well. And so right now we're just causing a little bit of confusion. And so for defense, it's all about making the thing look the same, but it ends up being something different, whether it's the pattern of game that we're running. Because right now we're running a three-man game. Me and um, Ed are, are, are trying to pick and penetrate for Tremaine to come around. Or, you know, sometimes we may bring Matt off the edge. So they may not quite be sure about what's going on right now. But um, my job and Ed's job is to really get all the attention of the center and uh, the guard that I'm lined up over right now, 67. Notice that I'm not going directly in there so that they can pass things off punch and pass. I'm trying to hold number 67's eyes as long as possible. Ed is trying to hold 55's eyes as long as possible because the person that really has to shovel it on this play is Ed Oliver because see, 70 is coming right now. He's, he's tracking yeah. Tremaine and so he has to really shovel it. He does a great job of expecting contact and getting vertical. I'm holding two right now, really just trying to drive back and uh, Tr uh, Tremaine is scraping for skin. Now they're able to really, they do a fairly good job on this. I think the person that really makes this play is Jerry Hughes coming off the edge. Most guys will get too high and keep running and will allow yeah. Darnold not only to 
have the escape line and the B gap, but then be able to run away from anybody that does find their way through. Luckily, I find my way over Ed on this. Now, if Jerry hadn't set that edge right there and he ran up to you, it would have gave, gave Sam Darnold a way to escape laterally away from me and run away from me and maybe throw the ball away late or even maybe outrun me and make a play with his legs. And so by him confining that B gap for me, allowing me to overlap Ed with his great penetration, and then everybody obviously you can see is, is hunting up the ball at that point, getting to it and making sure that we get Sam down. Yeah, this is a great job and a great point about, you know, Jerry Hughes. Um, Murphy is also kind of doing a good job of, uh, you know, holding the edge of that pocket as that, you know, three-man game kind of takes place here. Um, I, I really just like right. the power that you and, and uh, Ed Oliver came with. Because, again, guys, watch where the ball spotted at the 50 and then watch – as Darnold drops his eyes and steps up in the pocket, look where that 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 line of scrimmage is. Now that's reestablishing the line of scrimmage in the Bills' favor, and I mean yeah. that's really tough for a guy like that for D Darnold to you know make this throw without being able to step in. I mean this is reestablishing the line of scrimmage, and a great job by you guys up the middle, and and, and that's the quarterback's worst enemy, right, Lorenzo? Yeah, anytime you get you know pressure, and you, and you can look you look at the greatest quarterback of all time, right, Tom Brady. He becomes yeah. very average when he gets pressure up the middle in his face. Everybody, all quarterbacks are able to step up versus edge rushers. But guys that are dominant, if you can create that pressure in their face, they're, they're not able to step into the ball. They really can't see downfield as much because they have six, seven, six, eight linemen in their face. And so that's the ultimate um, equalizer anytime that you're playing a great quarterback. All right, Lorenzo, this is the game against the Giants. It's a third and 12 situation. Again, you guys have several defenders along the line of scrimmage. Here's Tremaine Edmonds also um, just in the A gap right there to the top of the screen. Um, and it ends up being, you know, basically man coverage again. And, you know, third and long, obviously the Giants are looking to push the ball down the field. And that's going to take time. And that's why this little pressure interior game between you and Harrison Phillips really really works out because there's no way that Eli Manning again is able to step up in the pocket so break down this little game between you and and Harrison Phillips right here again as you said I mean we have potentially one two three four five six guys that can come and so the offensive line obviously the, the tight end is going to probably chip on this just by his alignment on Trent the back is in protection as well as checking as you can see Matt is going to actually hug rush him and if the back was to stay in, Matt would keep going and be the sixth rusher in his defense. And so we're really trying to create uh, matchups and really get a 5-0 protection. And so we had a, had the confidence uh, with me and Harry on this game that I could widen out, try to get 70 to set to me. Harry's job right now is really just to get vertical penetration. Um, he gets bumped out of his gap just a little bit in this, and so they're able to pass it. And um, I probably could have took another step or two to really hold it so he could maybe pry it open. But he does a right. great job of continuing to work. And he's able to flip his hips um, and, and also get vertical pressure. Um, and then as the center is coming off on me, I'm able to, to swipe his hands and continue to get vertical pressure as well. Harry Flush makes him step up. I turn the corner um, and, and I'm able to push the ball out late right here to, you know, obviously to help create a, a forced fumble along with Harry getting the sack. And, and we actually shared his uh, his first sack in the NFL, which he wasn't <laughs> quite happy with. <laughs> uh, this is uh, this was one of you know his best games, too, last season. I know he didn't play many reps, but this was definitely one of his best games. And as you said, there's just so many possibilities, uh, not just who's rushing the quarterback, but the different games that you can – you know, you can play here. Um, and I just, I really liked how, as you said, you know, Phillips plays into both of these guys. And it really worked out well for both of you because what ends up happening is you get soft edges uh, on both guys. I mean, you already got the better half of that uh, offensive lineman. And yeah. he's got the better half of that offensive lineman. So you guys both got soft edges. And then you maintain that leverage. You see him use both of his hands right here to, to maintain that leverage. And then, as you said, you came with a, you know, a long arm initially right here and then swatted the guy's hands down, and that breaks free. So you guys both got really soft edges here, and this is just a little a game inside from, you know, two guys that are typically, you know, push-to-pocket type guys in these situations, but, um, you know, you guys worked so well together on this, and this is something, I mean, you and Kyle Williams, I mean, when you guys played together, right, you guys yeah. were the twist kings. And, uh, any type of games that right. were coming, Kyle was calling it for between you guys and you guys, we're able to get home more times than not. And this was just nice to see between two guys that awfully don't, you know, don't run many 
uh, twists or games, but I, I feel like Harrison had a good ga- a good game, and they were kind of rewarding yeah, him in this situation. Yeah, he had a great game, and I think this is the game he actually got hurt in, and so it was kind of uh, sad to see. But for us, what I really um, liked is that um, Harrison is – cut from the same cloth as Kyle in the, in the way of the way he sees the game. So he's yeah. very technical in that way, which I really like and enjoy because he's calling games that are going to beat the type of protection or the type of setter that we're going to get. And so that was one of the things that I actually missed out even for myself during this season because we worked really well together as far as how we saw the game, how well about our speed and tempo and as you can see right here, it, um, a lot of the times that we were working together, we, we found success. Even if it wasn't sacking the quarterback, we were definitely going to affect him by the movement that we got. All right, Lorenzo, another third and yep. long situation. And you, you got several guys up in the line of scrimmage, and you got both the linebackers mugging the A-gaps here. And if you right. pay attention, guys, to the running back right here and how he's aligned uh, almost to pick up this A-gap and the eyes and helmets of these offensive linemen kind of kind of give you an idea on what kind of block you're going to get here, right, Lorenzo? Right. Yeah, you definitely know. You And sometimes you may get a veteran guy that may look you off as a center and look one way and go the other way. And so there's a couple of things that you can get out of this double-A look, and this is probably our most common look that we may give teams. You're either going to get full slide and let the end man go, or as you see the, the running back stepped up, once he does that, you, you know that they're going to get some type of um, – Jet Marshall. protection where the center is going yeah. one way and the back has the other the other linebacker lined up in the A gap. And so prior to this call, I we I I probably most likely heard an R word, meaning that the center is going to go to his right, whether that's Ray, uh, Ringo, whatever R word you uh, you know Rainbow that normally dictates which way the center is going to help and which guard he's going to uh, help uh, block in this protection. Um, I think Matt Milano did a great job of getting the running back's eyes. Obviously, Dion is still checking to see if he needs help. And so for me, I knew I had the inside from the from the jump. And so all I wanted to do was sell it upfield as long as I could, understanding that I'm coming off the bench behind Jordan Phillips, who's a bull rusher, um, Ed Oliver, who loves to get up the field all the time. So I knew that I was going to have the spin move ready for me. So I just took it upfield. Understand that the guard loved to open up his hips and he really didn't have a chance to block him because I, I took it up far enough to where the running back who would normally be there to help him felt like it was safe in time to get out in the, in, in, into the uh, the route. And so it's just a perfect understanding of what was going on, what we were trying to do and where the side, center was going. And so my message is always, even if you may not be the most skilled as far as athleticism, you can use your mind to create plays for you as well if you understand the scheme of the blocks. All right, Lorenzo, quick little breakdown for you guys. It's something I I hope that we can do again. So where can everyone find you on social media? What are you doing as far as broadcasting goes and podcasting? Uh, What do you got going on for you right now? Well, I normally do like a weekly show on my Instagram live, Lorenzo Lorenzo underscore John, um, Wednesdays at noon Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Just talking with former teammates, uh, former trainers, athletic people that have really come into my life and impact me and try to pick their brain of what made them great. And then just show people where I've gotten a lot of my stuff from over the years. Um, I'm on um, Twitter, um, at one man gang 97 um, you know, constantly trying to throw some content on there as well. And then my, my ACES foundation, the and just really trying to serve people where I can and during this time of the pandemic where people have really been hit um, in numerous ways, obviously staying at home and, and, and the mental anguish that cost you the, the financial, uh, anguish that people are suffering as well as the health um, issues that people are going through right now and just trying to find different ways to be active and be part of the solution and, and lead from the front. Well, keep leading us, man. You know, we're all going to follow you and the Bills Mafia loves and misses you. And uh, again, thanks for coming on and, and joining me in the film room. I right, appreciate you, brother. I'll catch up with you later.